Good afternoon. I'm an infectious diseases physician, scientist, and educator. And in one way or another, I spend much of my day thinking about these little critters, bacteria. <laughs> now, bacteria were on this planet long before humans were. In fact, the best estimate is that bacteria emerged on Earth a few billion, that's with a B, years ago. So these organisms have learned a thing or two over the years. Now, infections due to bacteria have caused countless human deaths over the centuries. Think the plague or Black Death that wiped out much of Europe's population in the Middle Ages. And aside from a couple public health interventions, such as sanitation and a reliable drinking water supply, the advent of vaccines and antibiotics have literally been transformative to modern medicine. There are a number of things since the first dose of penicillin was given to a human that would not have been possible without treating bacterial infections. Think advanced surgery, organ transplantation, treatment of cancer, all things that would have been difficult or impossible if we could not treat the infectious complications that these patients were at risk for. Unfortunately, we have a problem. And not long after the first use of antibiotics in humans, we started finding bacteria that could no longer be treated by the antibiotic that we were giving. This is called antibiotic resistance, and it's become a worldwide problem. There are many reasons for this, from the use of antibiotics in animals and agriculture, to the spread of resistant pathogens in communities, and the incredibly shrinking world that we live in, where you could transport an organism that lives on you or in you to the far reaches of the globe in a matter of hours. My laboratory focuses on new ways to treat these drug-resistant pathogens or rapidly identify these drug-resistant organisms. We need new strategies to tackle these problems, and I'll give you one example today. Treating bacterial infections is difficult for a number of reasons. In addition to the ability to become antibiotic resistant, bacteria have a number of tools that they use to survive in the environment. One of these clever tools is the ability to form something called a biofilm. Now, when a bacterium attaches to a surface, let's pretend for a minute that I'm a piece of plastic, such as an intravascular catheter that we use in the hospital to administer medications to patients. And when a bacterium attaches to this, not only can it easily attach to that surface, but it can start to divide. And as it divides, those bacteria will stick to the surface, and it'll divide and divide and multiply until you form this thick aggregate of bacteria and a variety of substances that are secreted by this organism that we call a biofilm. You could imagine that if this is coating a surface, it might pose a few challenges to treatment, and that's exactly what happens. <laughs> Biofilms are all around us. So now is the part of the talk where I need to say, don't try this at home unless you want to be a little grossed out. <laughs> but if you go home tonight and you unscrew your shower head and you look inside, that gunk, that's a technical term, <laughs> that gunk is a biofilm. And biofilms are everywhere. The plaque on our teeth is a biofilm. The um, surface of rocks when you're walking across a stream and that slime that you feel, that is a biofilm. And in medicine, you might already know that we put a lot of objects in people. And one of the complications of doing this is the development of bacterial infections, specifically biofilm-associated infections. And this was a problem that a few of us at UT Southwestern wanted to try and tackle. I'm going to talk about one particular medical advance, and that's the use of prosthetic joints. Now, just by a show of hands, who here in the audience either has a prosthetic joint or know of somebody who does? Say, a knee, a hip, a shoulder, some other piece of metal in their body. See, quite a few of you. The advent of prosthetic joints has been a major medical advance. It's literally transformed people's ability to be mobile and improve their quality of life. Here's an image of a prosthetic knee, and it's estimated that by the year 2030, in the US alone, we will be putting in three and a half million prosthetic joints per year. This is great news, unless something goes wrong. And one of the complications is the development of infections. We're taking a close look at what happens um, when a bacteria gets in the wrong place at the wrong time, you form a biofilm, and our immune cells that normally clear an infection can't reach the organism, and antibiotics that we give to patients to treat the infection can't reach the bacterium as well. A couple years ago, my laboratory and the laboratory of Rajiv Chopra wanted to try and tackle this problem. 
Now, Rajiv is a physicist by training, and he thinks about things differently than I do. An infectious diseases physician meets a physicist. This is when a lot of fun things started to happen. And our idea was, could we come up with a way where we could non-invasively, without surgery, try to remove biofilm off the surface of metal? And we settled on magnetic fields, alternating magnetic fields, in fact. It turns out, if you put a coil around a metallic object and you run electricity through it in a certain way, you will generate magnetic fields. And anything that's metallic inside that coil will develop currents on its surface and that will generate heat. And the thought was, perhaps we could heat up the biofilm and perhaps we could melt away the biofilm. And if we could start to melt away that biofilm, could we actually enhance our immune system or antibiotics to help clear away the infection? And that's exactly what happened. Like all good science projects, this started with a trip to the hardware store. We bought, <laughs> I won't tell you which one, we bought a stainless steel washer, we built a small coil, we grew biofilm on that washer and started delivering alternating magnetic fields. And lo and behold, you can nicely remove a biofilm off the surface of metal. And this is completely driven by direct heating of that surface. And most importantly, it doesn't matter whether you're a drug-resistant bacteria or a drug-sensitive bacteria. It's heat. Here's an up-close and personal look at this effect. So this is electron microscopy, so we can get a really good look at the biofilm. In the top left, this thick mat is a biofilm, and each individual blob is a single bacterium. We grew biofilm on metallic rings. We, in these experiments, just pulsed periodic bursts of alternating magnetic fields. And you can see that over time, we can remove this biofilm off the surface of metal quite nicely. And the rate at which you reduce the biofilm is really driven by the temperature that you can achieve on that surface. In fact, we can remove biofilm off the surface of metal in a matter of seconds. We've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out what is the best temperature that we would like to reach on a surface of a metal implant where we can destroy a biofilm, but not destroy other things that are important to us, like surrounding tissues. And you might think at first glance that this would be impossible, but it's not. In fact, we've learned a number of things about how we can deliver magnetic fields so that we can degrade a biofilm and not damage neighboring tissues. And we've learned a number of things along the way. For example, it turns out that alternating magnetic fields and antibiotics are actually synergistic. So, okay, we're gonna have to do a little math now, and I'm gonna have to define for you what synergy is. So, here is an equation for synergy. I'm sensing a few groans from the audience. It's okay, I'm not very good at math either. So, let me try to define synergy in my own way. I'll give you an alternative equation. So, Bobby cleans his room plus Sarah cleans her room equals Bobby is happy, Sarah is happy, mom and dad are happy, and a new Porsche magically appears in the driveway. <laughs> that is synergy. That is when the combination of two things together does more than each individual component by itself. And it turns out, in fact, that alternating magnetic fields are synergistic with antibiotics, and this has important implications for how we might use this technology in the future. We're now developing this technology in advanced models of biofilm, and in fact, we're starting on a path to commercializing this technology so that one day our hope is to get this in front of patients. Our goal is that one day, if you have a knee replaced and it gets infected, that we will no longer have to remove that prosthesis and that you will be able to keep it and we can treat the infection without multiple surgeries and complications. This was a project that brought together a diverse group of people from UT Southwestern with a variety of areas of expertise. Thank you. <laughs>